hello, welcome. For this and the next few lectures, I will talk about physics-based machine learning for inverse problems. In the next few lectures, we talk about automatic differentiation, and also we cover neural networks. And in this lecture, we will see how we can put them into practice to solve inverse problems in scientific computing. First of all, let us review a little bit about the inverse problem we already see in heat transfer. And in this problem, we have a heat equation here. And the governing equation is basically a diffusion equation with a coefficient kappa x. And there's a heat source called F. And U is the temperature. And on the left hand side, we assume the insulated boundary condition, which is written as uh, uh, the derivative of U with respect to x equals 0. And on the right hand side, we fix the temperature uh, to be 0. And this coefficient has the form a plus bx, and a and b are unknown. And what we want to do is to estimate a and b from the temperature measured on the left hand side. And from this temperature distribution, we want to estimate a and b. So how did we do that? We formulated this problem as a PD constraint optimization problem, where all the constraint is the PD itself with boundary conditions and the initial conditions. And the objective function is simply the discrepancy between our measurement u0 and, uh, and the uh, hypothetical output of the, uh, the PD system. And in this case, because we have a continuous system, we use integral to uh, describe the discrepancy. And then this is the mathematical formulation of the PD constraint optimization problem. So this is a typical case of inverse modeling. In the forward problem, uh, like here, in the forward problem, uh, we solve the PDE, we know this coefficient, and A and B, we, so we know this kappa x. So, and then we solve this PDE to uh, extract the uh, temperature on the left hand side, that is the hypothetical temperature U0D. And then this is the forward problem. You have a model parameters, you have some physical laws, and then you obtain the prediction of observations. In the inverse problem, you, you reverse this procedure where you have the prediction, uh, you have the observations, and the use, uh, you also have the physical laws. You want to use observations and the physical laws to estimate the parameters, uh, such as the coefficient A and B in the diffusivity coefficient kappa x. Uh, many real-life engineering problems can be formulated as inverse problems. Uh, f uh, basically, you have data, and then you have the physical laws, and then you can get some predictions of your output. And in a data-driven uh, model, then you have the observations, and then you want to estimate the physical properties in your physical laws. And this can be applied to a lot of uh, applications, such as optimal control, predictive modeling, or discover physics, or reduced order modeling. Uh, there are so many other applications as well. So let, let's talk a bit more about inverse problems. There are basically several kinds of inverse problems. The, the inverse problem we have already seen is the parameter inverse problem, where the unknown is one or more parameters, such as the problem we already say. The unknown here is A and B, so we want to estimate the A and the B from this PD constraint optimization. Of course, we have other types of uh, inverse problems. Uh, in this slide, we talk about the function inverse problem. Well, the unknown is not a coefficient A and B, but this function. The, and the function is unknown. So actually, the solution space you are looking at is a space of functions instead of a space of uh, parameters, A and B. And this is more challenging because uh, the space of solutions is actually infinite dimensional. So you have to look for solutions in an infinite dimensional space. And in this, and this is actually for this uh, function inverse problem, kappa x does not depend on u, which we usually call state variables in a general PD constraint optimization. And so another case is that Kappa also depends on the state variables, and this makes the problem more difficult technically. But mathematically, the description is uh, nearly the same, except that the kappa also depends on u. So for this can, uh, these two kinds of inverse problems, the function inverse problems, 
uh, we have uh, we, we can uh, so there are many techniques for doing that uh, the basic idea is to approximate this kappa x or kappa x u using a, a function in a family of uh, parameterized functions uh, such as uh, for example the piecewise linear functions which we will talk later and also uh, the focus of this course is to uh, investigate whether neural networks can be used to do this kind of inverse modeling and um, the, the fourth case is the stochastic inverse problem. And in this lecture, we will not cover stochastic inverse problem, uh, but it will be covered later, mentioned a little bit later uh, uh, in the last few lectures. And in this case, the unknown is neither a function uh, nor parameters, but a random variable. So that's uh, your, st uh, your system is a stochastic. Uh, that makes the problem more interesting, but challenging. Uh, well, your observation should also be a, uh, a distribution in, instead of some uh, fixed uh, values. So to summary, we have uh, four types of inverse problem. The first is uh, parameter inverse problem, where your function uh, is parameterized by several parameters. For example, kappa x equal a plus bx, and then you want to estimate a and b. And the second type of inverse problem is the so-called function inverse problem. And in this course, we treat two kinds of function inverse problem. The first case is an independent case, where your kappa x does not depend on the state variable u. And the second case is the dependent case, where your uh, kappa x depends on x, u, or was simply is dependent on u. Uh, mathematically, the description is nearly the same, but uh, technically, uh, you need different tools to do this kind of uh, these two uh, problems. And the third uh, and the fourth step is the stochastic inverse problem. We will not cover in this lecture, but it will be mentioned a little bit in the later lecture.